Hey guys, it's Alex from the Disciples here today with a LCS and PPG overview breakdown video type of thing. Uh, we've got some of, the, of our players and Tristan Pugh of FCG here to talk about the the events as a whole and what they mean for the format going forward. Um, they've all muted themselves, so I'll ask them to unmute themselves in a minute. Smile. Um, and yeah, can you unmute yourself? It's cool. Thanks. Hello. 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 <laughs> um, I can't work with <laughs> Bro, we're the BTEC team. We've got to do BTEC things. Um, so, yeah, the LCS happened. Um, Ryan, you of Game Nation, right? Won it. 15 year old, yeah. I think. Free money. Um, with his Sky Striker strategy. Um, yeah. Is, is Sky Striker even on the breakdown? Sky Striker? Yeah, one percent. One percent, one percent. They knew, they knew at the beginning that one percent would win. Um, and then the PPG also happened. Uh, drastically smaller event, only like 80 players with very high representation of the Mystic Mind strategy. But yeah. Se secretly the best deck in the format. Secretly the best deck in the format. Um, I mean, it's basically to play more minds. Yeah. <laughs> so, Tristan, how was your event? It was really good. It was pretty chill. Started with two buys. Didn't have to play the last round of Swiss. I played six rounds of Swiss total. Did it go 6 0 -so, though? No, that's oh. not that good. <laughs> How did you do in the event? Uh, I got top four. Yeah, well, that's which mad. Is my second best LCS performance. Still can't get first, but maybe I'm next time. <laughs> I'm grinding. I mean, what a top eight, a top four, and a second place. That's pretty good. Yeah, we're saving the win for the biggest one. Yeah, exactly. Consistency still. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh, we'll talk about your deck again, I guess, in a minute. Uh, Gabriel, you played also. How was your event? Oh. Absolute garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm convinced at least I had a good list because I was playing the same list as Tristan. But yeah, I, I had the two buys. Went one three. Oh no. And slept for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the the losses were out of your control at least, right? Yeah, I think like just Yu Gi Oh happened. Ah. Like some some stuff just some day sometimes it's just not your day. I think the list was very good. Yeah, that's understandable. Um, and then Mardi as well. You played, mad. Yeah. How did your event go? Very bad. Um, it was okay. Like I got knocked out day one, last round. Uh, I think the same sort of thing happened to me that happened to Gabriel. So like my list could have done in retrospect a little bit more work, but I think when I look back at what I lost to, I don't think like making that many changes would have helped. I just kind of lost to you as well. Yeah. It's worth knowing that you played dinos and not rocks as well. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, I played the worst deck. So that, that probably <laughs> factored into it. Um, Although we did see some dinos top. Yeah. We did, we did, yeah. All 7% of them in the uh, initial... Oh, if there's only 319 players. I thought there was more than that. There was originally more signed up, but like some people just didn't pay, so they get dropped. Oh, uh, okay. Well, that's so still this like... is how many players. That's how many that's players okay. actually played. Played from round one, I guess. Um, yeah. That's still insane, though. To think like online events, uh, paid online events, yeah. got three hundred twenty yeah. players basically. I think the finals itself, like on DB, on DB itself had like four hundred watches at one point. It was crazy. yeah, it was insane. Never seen that many. Yes, yeah, that's the most people I've seen. Like spectating yeah. the game on the DB. Yeah, I've literally never seen anyone with that. Well, any match with that many, and plus there was is what, this like, like? Oh, sorry. Is this the biggest like online tournament that you guys had? Um, like one that you've paid entry to, yes. Yeah, I guess because Crush Guard Cup is free. Yeah, but... and the the Fafa one, the traditional one's got like six hundred already, I think. Oh, okay. Which is insane. Um, okay, so this is the biggest like. One that you have to pay entry for. Yeah. Which is pretty that's, insane. That's wild. Yeah. 
and like Fafa had I think like seventeen hundred watches at some point as well. Yeah. So, so it's like pretty insane numbers for like a Yu Gi Oh event yeah. online. Um, it's actually like more than some uh, presidential events. Yeah, exactly. On, like watches. And like, yeah, no, it's just insane. Um, so, might as well go into Tristan's list. Actually, do we want to talk about the like the breakdown first? I guess. Um, I don't know if there's much to talk yeah. about. Like, I mean, it's like to be expected, right? That that's the sort of breakdown we would think the two best, clearly best decks are highest represented by yeah. a massive margin. And then again, it was like expected. There's going to be a like a large amount of um, unrepresented decks. Because people are just going to enter with whatever they want. Um, yeah, so Eldritch was most represented because this is 6% of Eldritch invoked as well. Yeah, and then there's so and then pure 3% pure. of Pure as well. So it's 32%. That's almost a third of the tournament is Eldritch. Yeah. That's... I mean, probably even more because you have like the Eldritch variants that probably are counted in yeah, others. Yeah, exactly. That's true. So someone topped with Eldritch too. I know there was Eldritch Blunder as well. Eldritch Blunder. Oh, wow. That's that. That's a weird list, um, but yeah, no, that was like, I feel like the format's getting a lot more defined as like as of current. Um, yeah, bef- at the beginning, sure. like of say, April, I want to say, um, when like a secret Slayer came out, um, everyone kind of just like, it's a lot of pure variants, and now it's just reaching more defined. Um, all the other Manspace lists are a lot similar. Uh, and the Switch decks, like, showing um, as the better variant list, for that archetype even. I don't know if you've got, got anything else to add before we go on. Can we, can we compare the breakdown to the PPG event? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, 24%. Adam Antipater, 33% uh, Eldritch variants, and then PPG breakdown. So, like, notably, PPG have got a lot more salad. Yes, yeah. But, like, 100%. salad only had a 4% representation in uh, the LCS. I think that says a lot about the difference in quality of the events. Yeah, it's, yeah. well, like, because of the prize difference I want to say that like a lot more um, competitive players would have entered the LCS event over the PPG yeah um, and yeah people, people who thought they had a chance of winning more money would have entered LCS yeah exactly and if you weren't as confident in yourself as a player I guess you would enter the PPG just for like a freer tournament I guess um, yeah we'll get to those lists later yeah exactly <laughs> um <laughs> So, if we go into Tristan's deck, uh, which Gabriel also played, um, I want to say it's more of a standardized list now, um, just because, like, as a group, we've been playing it for, what, like, the last, like, three of three events? Something like that, yeah. Since the YOS. Events. Yeah. So the YOS, uh, last week's PPG event, and then this week's LCS, um, uh, like, the ratios have changed a bit. But like definitely like maining the like, the tuner extenders and the Adhara, um, and then maining hand traps, siding more, uh, midbreaker as well is like massive, I guess. Um, yeah, that's becoming a a big trend in rock decks. Tristan, as it was your deck and Gabriel as well. Um, have you got anything like to specifically talk about? I guess. Um. So, I guess you can sort of highlight the differences across the events. Because you we kind of have to update it to be ahead of the meta at every event. Like, and yeah, the, exactly. The, y- the YOS was the most notable one because nobody was on Adara, nobody was on Takam Crusader, people weren't on Link Spider Combo. So for that event, we were like miles ahead of everybody. But for the for the preceding events, people sort of catch on a little bit. Like people are still behind. People are still on Go Go for some reason. Yeah, that's still on that apps, crazy. Still on signs. Still on artifacts. Like trying to play Dark Ruler or play around Dark Ruler, it, it doesn't make sense with Synchro Elbitch in the meta. You you can't beat that deck with Dark Ruler. Yeah, I um I did kind of like the idea of playing the um the Artifact Dagger um, engine because it does just like mitigate the fact that you're not losing to Dark Ruler and like those blind those going second cards. 
But when everyone's on, like, loads of hand traps, it kind of, it doesn't feel adequate enough. Yeah, like, you're you're very rarely resolving full combo. And if you are, you should be winning, like, 95% of those games anyway. Like, the 5% that you are losing, it, like, it, it doesn't really matter. You can make up the difference in the sliding games. Yeah, exactly. And as you see, you're sliding, like, more hand traps for the combo matchups. And then also, like... The Cyclones reboot Pankratops for when you're going against um, the back row matchups as well. Yeah, so I think for the PPG list, we mean like nine hand traps, right? Yeah, or I think it's nine. Nine. Yeah. nine. So we we decided that it didn't make sense to play that number because you're sort of, you're sort of hedging between trying to open two and trying to open one. You're just like hitting a middle ground, which isn't like it's not consistently good enough. So to open two you should be aiming for sort of 11 12 and up but you can't really afford to main that amount in this deck without severely damaging your consistency going first and since everybody's on hand traps you you have to win going first you can't afford to give them a turn especially when it's synchro outlitch and they need one card to do full combo yeah. so it made sense it made sense more to hedge towards uh just playing six and having a plus 50 percent chance of beating like you can beat the mirror with one hand trap sometimes um, yeah. But it's it's more about being synchro old lich, which is the most represented deck. So it's correct to do that in retrospect. Yeah, and the mirror, like if they open block trap, and even if you open two hand traps, you're losing like half the games. So it's too it's too awkward. So I don't think it's worth it, like playing too many hand traps because against synchro world, your other hand traps are also bad. Because unless you're playing Nash, most of them have no value against the actual old lich engine. They're just for the synchro combo. So this way, you actually like you stop your play, and then you have rock cards to deal with the conquistador and the adlich interrupts. Yeah, no, it's it seems very like a very solid list. Um, the Dinoferium, I guess, is taking precedence as a extender over the unexpected dice and the, those cards to play in the as well. Um, I don't know as much else you want to say about this. It's more so that it's like uh, it's. More card efficient to play yes. uh, Dinotherium as opposed to playing Die because Die takes up five slots for three extenders, whereas you could just yeah. play five extenders. Uh, Die also doesn't conflict. Uh, Dinotherium doesn't conflict with Nibiru, uh, while Die does. Yeah. And like we are, we need to side padding out a lot. So if we had to side padding and Die out, we would have that many extenders. While well, you can keep Dinotherium in because it doesn't conflict with your hand traps that you're siding in one second. Yeah, exactly. No, it makes a lot of sense. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about the no material on the side or like token collector or exchange, but we can always They're do that. They're basically all yeah. like the same quality hand trap when you draw them in multiples. Like I had a, uh, one of my matches, I uh, opened Valor and Gnome, and it, if it was two Valor, it would be the exact same. If it was Valor and Ash, it was probably the same. If it was Valor and token collector, it's probably the same. Um, so it's. It's less so that it has to be specifically Gnome, but Gnome being Earth, when you're siding out so many rocks and some extenders, it's better, It's favorable to keep your block dragons live as often as possible. Yeah. So having an, an Earth hand trap that is the same as Valor um, is obviously more beneficial. Token Collector's kind of nuts. I, I don't think I drew it the whole tournament looking through my replays, um, but it's it's a blowout against uh, Eldritch, so it's, it's pretty good to play. And it's a free extender when it resolves no it makes a lot of sense okay right let's move on to uh ryan Yu's first place sky striker list then i guess Boy. um i know marcus is very excited yeah. about this list yes um so i feel like at the beginning of the weekend um at least our group specifically would not have believed that this deck would have even made top cut, let alone won the event. Um, so, if anyone wants to chime in about what they think about this list, because I'm still kind of just shook by it. Um, I think it's just a very low variance. Like, if you look at this deck, look at this list, he's playing three ofs. Like, um, he's like, he's drawing a hand trap, at least one hand trap's 90%, hand trap's at 60%, he's always going second. And um, majority of time, he's going to be against Synchro Eld. I think Rock is probably a worse matchup because he's mainly Cyclones. But versus Synchro Eld, a lot of times, 
stop their fiber. Sometimes they might have an additional play, but this deck can grind well. Yeah. I think they struggled to kill the striker link. And uh like afterburn is just now because there's no there's no big GC in the format, no Colossus. Especially the access code OTK. Like first once you've cleared the Eldritch board or once they've cleared out all the negates, the access code tool could just spice up. Yeah, no, it's, it's actually just insane when you go from, like, it's just, like, you hand-trap them, and then you just, like, grind a little bit, dwindle, like, their resources, and then you just some randomly summon Needle Fiber somehow, and then they're just dead. Yeah. Um, like, these cards still operate a lot in the same way as they did back, like, when Striker was in that attack. It's just not got engaged to, like, accelerate that. It takes a little bit longer, but, like, the Shark Cannons are still, like, high-impact cards, like, when you hit the Eldritch Lords, or when you hit the Jet Synchrons. The Widow Anchors are still, like, premium negates, premium disruption. Like, these cards still do the same thing. And, yeah. And, like, the Striker Link's floating as well. Like, a lot of decks, as Mark said, just can't deal with it. I think another big thing is that uh, this deck, like, does really well in simple, like, formats. Like, a lot of deck lists in this format are predictable. You kind of have to main and traps like Vela, Nibiru, uh, just to stop needle fire yeah, sure. and like a lot of, a lot of the these uh, monster plays monster effect plays are very low value but you're play a lot like since most people are playing decks where they try to open at least one hand trap you're playing against as as this deck always chooses a second this deck is playing against like four cards at least four cards every game mm -hmm. which is like super important not like they're literally having a dead card not dead but not as optimal card and another thing is can't really back or removal this format because like I was played around not losing to like cards like Lightning Storm playing synchro cards and then this deck just fired off that since like people aren't maining back or removal as much. Mystic Mine go. Jeez. Mystic Mine. It's it's worth noting that like this deck can break a rock board with like five striker cards. Yeah. The rock board doesn't end on that many spark trap negates. Like Ray plus two good spells basically break it if you think yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah kind of no block is like, like with just the whole recursion. Yeah, yeah. they can like... charge cannon the block and they have the mine out as well. Like if they can bait, bait, bait and activate mine. Yeah, mine being in the deck is such a like a mind fuck because you have to play around not losing to mine, but by doing so you're using like you're trying to hold the gates. And then you're letting striker cards resolve, and then suddenly he doesn't have mine, and he's out with your whole board. Yeah, and now suddenly like, striker can kill you, which I guess is awkward. That's yeah, that's because, the scary thing. Like before, you that. literally could just like not do anything, and striker couldn't kill you. And now I'm not that certain because like <laughs> fiber is basically like five tree on board with the access code. Yeah, it's insane. I um I read Rose earlier today, and. I know it, I knew it could like summon itself, but I didn't even know knew it like know it could um, summon itself from hand when you just summoned any striker. I was I was shook. Every and time Rose has been activated against me, I've read it another time and learned a new thing. Literally, it's insane. Yeah. Like I someone activated activated Rose on me in a, a YCS, and he sum he summoned it and like negated my sleeper. I was like, well, you can't target, it. and he said it doesn't target. I was like, what? <laughs> wait, wait, what? Wait, it negates a card? Wait. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I haven't, I don't think I've read it then. Um... See, that's what I mean. Like, it, it does so much. Like, they all seem the really low impact. Sort of... But when, when you forget about one of the three effects, it comes up. <laughs> Literally. It's also just more consistent, right? You have like six copies of Ray, basically. Yeah. 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 Also, um, the fact that they've got a link to Sky Striker Ace is also like pretty big just for like uh -huh. you you can like widow anchor then link away and then link back yeah, down into then, a link one yeah, i can't even know i got yeah, to do that yeah, yeah and you can play nibiru as well which i guess is yeah exactly huge. like old sky striker variants just couldn't yeah like now you can consistently link it off it's also really yeah. big that shark cannon can just take guardian or herald in the rock matchup <laughs> suddenly so you've got sick. another negate on being yeah on i pulled. saw that in the finals just took the herald and there yeah, no, I learned that uh, just you just take Mecha and that's enough on the gate. It's pretty insane. But yeah, no, like, massive congrats to him for, like, playing the entire event. Because, like, as always, like, the Sky Striker deck is, like, a time deck. Like, 
it it's not something that's your, you're going to get your win in like five ten minutes you're going to be there for like 40 50 minutes and doing that all weekend long also just playing it just seems very long like and a lot of work for the brain so like zero free wins and you probably get punished for your misplays yeah exactly so like i know it's, it's massive even in your head you don't have like massive interrupts so like you need to be on your on the edge every time yeah you always like generate the main play yep um and then we've got uh herman hansen of he's on e-man now right yeah uh so we've got his list um it's sort of standard sort of not standard synchro out list um one despot three one despot three for the blowout and <laughs> free torrential as well which i think that's like the most noticeable oh, thing sorry. about this list um like I remember talking about... There's also about... mainly the counter trap, I guess, which is not yeah. very standard nowadays. Oh, really? Oh, I thought I assumed that would be... I thought it would mainly one, but... Yeah, Torrential just seems insane in this format, like, even going second if your yeah, opponent's not expecting it. Yeah, the other top four list didn't play the counter trap. Oh, really? No. No, no, it didn't. Um, yeah, no, it's... It's either, like... Personally, this list looks kind of aesthetically pleasing. Um, the o o 3 Looks a bit random, but I guess if you just want to increase your the amount of starter cards in your deck, um, yeah. I think that's the most because... relevant thing is no magician stars, right? Oh yeah, that's yes. really big. Yeah, yeah, that's massive. So he said that like, if it's only really good when you open like multiple eld cards, so you can like get value out of them and draw cards. And he would rather just have like a torrential and just set it, and it's a blowout. Uh, I yeah, think. Really extend past the torrential once it started committing like fiber to link cross into aura. But once you commit that and it gets torrential, that's basically your time over, right? Yeah, it's basically like a Nibiru that you can activate at any point. So if they threaten a herald in four summons, you can just torrential them. Yeah. Also, you can you can even trigger it in the battle phase with the golden lands if they haven't set up a negate. Because if you're playing through Elder Back Row and they haven't activated any of them, you probably just assume it's dead, like dead Eldlixers. Yeah, that's true, actually. And then suddenly you flip a Conquistador with an out and Eldlich on field, and they're like, oh, okay, I guess I just negate the Sanguine or Ash the Sanguine, whatever. And then it summons, and then they go uh, Chainlink 1 Fiber on summon, Chainlink 2 Torrential. And suddenly their whole board is gone, and you summon a monster, and you draw a card. <laughs> yeah, you also have like a false sense of security, because after they flip Sanguine, they can't Nibiru you. So people just like overcome it. Yeah, I think that's important as well. Um... I don't know. It it looks like a very like um an interesting way to playing it without the magician souls and like torrential. It's more of like a control variant because I guess he's just analyzed that like his synchro play into fiber is just not gonna go through a hundred percent of the time. So he'd ha rather have like more consistent cards like torrential, just like um, increases variance, I guess in a way. Um, might be wrong there, but. I think yeah, I think it's like Souls is like a super powerful card when it resolves, but you can just replace the cards that you're attempting to draw with the cards that you want to see. Yeah, and then you don't have the like pseudo brick of um, Apprentice as well. Yeah, a lot of people opened with Apprentice on the weekend and complained about it. Yeah, you also have the fact that like people are saving the hand trap for Aurora then. So one of the things that happened before is that people are just like dropping hand traps on Fiber. So if you open Souls Jet and they hand trap Fiber, you still combo. People now learned that you just keep it for Aura done. So yeah. the Souls benefit as a special summon doesn't do that much. Yeah, that's true as well. Mm. Um, right, then we've got Christian Thomas's list, uh, also of E-Man games. Uh, in a less aesthetically pleasing order, but it makes <laughs> sense. Um, so he played, what, 14, 15 Eldritch, Eldritch cards? Yeah. Um, yep. He did, again. He did. He neglect, neglected to play the um, the counter trap, but then he also just didn't play the black either. No, no black. But he played white instead, I which white. I think yeah. is better personally. But I'm probably wrong. Yeah. Um, and but he also didn't play um, either the VFD combo or the draw combo, um, which I think is like the biggest part about this list. Is that it's like it's almost a standard list, uh, standard list for Synchro Eldritch, besides like the extra deck, which is like massively different in my eyes. Yeah, when you look yeah. at the extra deck, you realize how different the deck actually is. I think it's actually very smart. 
Yeah, I mean, right. his, re- his reasoning is that, like, since the combo doesn't resolve that much, you'd rather have, like, potential blowout cards. Like, resolving formula twice gets you to draw two draws anyway. Uh, I don't really know how to out the BLS link sometimes. <laughs> like, that card in the main's yeah, attack yeah, is, is absurd. <laughs> Yeah, I actually just don't even think about. I think you just you have to just what like uh, access code talker it, and if you're playing rocks, you can't. We well, can't do that even. Um, yeah, exactly. I know, but like Cel- Celine's also really massive. Like as we saw in yeah. the striker deck, it's just a free climb into access code. You can access code in like less than five summons, depending on what you used on your opponent's end phase as well. Because yeah, like if you, flip your, if you flip your traps on the end phase, you can go like fiber, veiler, access code. One, two. Yeah, that's true actually. And I guess that's like why the white, white is slightly better in it, I guess, because you can just end phase summon a tuner back. Um. Yeah, that's very true. That might be why. You yeah, you can, the summon, white. you can summon Ash. Yeah. Um. I, don't know if I think some... the other ones are zombie as well, right? The show. Yeah, I think so. I don't. I, I don't know. I can't tell right now. But um, I assume it is. Like, why wouldn't it be? But I don't know if there's anything else. Like, he played Double Aurora Don, but some of the lists have been playing that as well, I guess. Um, I feel like Double Aurora Don should be standard at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Same with Double Aurora. Something that people don't really know is that if you open Jet, Souls, and Outland, you can actually combo through Hand Trap on Aurora Don. Because Aurora Don is not once per turn. Really? Yeah, well, that's mad. Yeah. Yeah, we've discussed this a lot. That's why we were kind of scared about playing Imperm and Veiler. Yeah, you know, but people just didn't know it. Yeah, that, like, that's... Uh, in one of my top cut games against Blair Hunter, I did that, and he had, like, the resources to do it, but I don't know if he played it. So if he played it, he would have beaten me game one, for sure. Um, And he said, what was his two losses to? He lost to uh, Altergeist and Sky Striker. Um, yeah. <laughs> So I guess the two wild horses of the event, as we saw, what two, I think it was, it was one or two Alter Guys top. I can't remember how many it was, but I know definitely one top. I don't know if another one top. Oh or really? Not. Oh really? Um, <laughs> and then if we yeah, t- that's the difference between him and Herman's list is that uh, Christian didn't play Storm, so Herman had a better matchup against Backrow. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Actually, it's just unlucky that they were on the uh, opposite side of the bracket. So. Um, Herman didn't play against Ryan, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then if we take a look at the PPG event, so we already touched on the breakdown oh, a little bit. Oh, this going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> we already touched on the breakdown a little bit. Um, obviously, a s- smaller turnout, so uh, less rep- representation of the decks. Salamangre and Mineburn with surprisingly higher turnouts, I guess. Um, and then... Let me see if like where I put the top eight. There we go. Um, top eight breakdown is four Eldritch variants. We don't know which. Um, <laughs> two Salamangre, one Adamantipator, which is kind of shocking. But um, as Tristan mentioned to me before the event started, uh, sorry, before we started recording this, um, all of the good Adamantipator players were probably just in the LCS instead. So. Yeah, if they were smart enough to realise that Adamantipate is a really good deck and can play it well, they probably just played it in the LCS yeah, to get exactly. better chance. And then well, the... we can see it from the Adamantipate list. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and then there's the one Mystic Mine player, um, whose list I wish I had, because that would probably be the best list in top 8. But... Uh... I think it is on Facebook. But... Oh, yeah, it's, probably... on, it's on Ready for Do. Ah, oh, damn, I missed it. Yeah. It's too late. Um, so we've got the first place list. Um, how many? Wait, how many cards is this even in the main? Three, six, nine, eleven. Oh, I don't even want to count. I think it's forty-two. Forty-two. That would make sense. Yeah, I think it's forty-two. Um, yeah, it's forty-two. So, yeah. Um, have you guys got anything to say about this? It's like. This is just. VFD, VFD deck um, probably could have been yeah, 40 it's... cards um, probably I don't know he's playing Cobra the Grave yeah. I guess which is the most, most different thing here Yeah. also for some reason he's playing Moonlight Chill over Effect Failure which I can't figure out why um, Moonlight, Moonlight Chill is a zombie so you can yeah. summon Sanguine I mean you can also summon Ash 
Yeah, I don't know when that ever really matters. <laughs> Maybe he wants the wind monster, bro. Uh, oh, right, he's more just a zombie for the same Oh, he didn't play like... um, access code either. Oh, come on. oh he doesn't uh, play that's access good. code. That's yeah, you can of... fit it on the VFD yeah, one. The VFD he's extra deck looks good. He he is playing two Aurora though. Maybe he knew about the combo. Maybe he did. Maybe he I just think maybe he knew VFD, he was gonna it win. Makes sense, right? Because like so. you really want to resolve VFD because it's VFD. So true. if you like forced to resolve it, even like not... he's playing called by and you can like play multiple extenders through the play we thought we were talking earlier. Yeah. You just yeah. let your you just make your play through any hand trap. I guess you don't need access code as much because like you have like Croc gets a really big attack and the Vermillion's pretty big and pops a card. And then the Eldritch on top of that is a lot of damage. That's usually game. Yeah, well, Croc is massive. Um and I guess Savage Dragon as well if you go down that line at some point. Um yeah. So yeah, the side is very similar to Herman's. Like yeah. Floodgates, back row, hate, hand traps. He just changed what the two Phantasm made for two other Floodgates, right, I guess? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Uh, Waterman Skill Drain. Waterman Skill Drain. Uh, then we've got second place Salaman Great List. Um, I'm not a fan of this ordering, but oh well. Um, he played, for a Salad List, he only played, what, six Salaman Great Monsters. Um, which is something I didn't realise until just now, but that seems crazy to me. Um, especially I guess it's more like Cybers. <laughs> Cybers OTK. Oh, right. <laughs> Cybers yeah. Control slash OTK. Um, I don't like the one Jaguar because I feel like with Hakuero in the format, um, if you lo if you end up in a grind game, you just lose your just lose because of the Jaguar's gone. Um, you can also argue he's like not grinding with Salomon Great cards. Yeah, that might be true. Um, yeah, with update jam access code combo, it's less likely that you have to push for games now. You can just kill with two random solid monsters. Yeah. And uh, what's it? The debugs are like a one card OTK in this deck as well. Debug, yeah, format, Gazelle, Silent forward, Mining. Yeah. He didn't play one for one, which is questionable as well, I guess. Because that's an additional like extender for OTK with former skipper. Um, yeah, he has a lot of monsters as well, so yeah, be live a lot of the time. Um, he could one also... of each of the traps seems weird, right? Um, I don't know. He might, maybe he cho chose to blind second. You never know. But um... <laughs> not with the grave diggers trap, I assume. Yeah, I assume not. But like you... American players, like he might have just <laughs> put it in his main deck for when he do when he's yeah. like going first. He's actually got a defensive card. What's his yeah. pose? Is that is that Pojang? I don't have a clue, Duelist. Um, but, yeah, he um, he got second deck, second place with his Salaman Great Strategy. Uh, he didn't play Dweller, which, uh, when I saw the list, that was, like, the first thing that points that, like, poked out to me. Um, and I thought that was kind of crazy. Especially in a format that's, like... But this is yeah. just better, this format. Like, against the Rocks. But I feel like Eldritch is a harder matchup, and that's like you need like the Dweller to like control the game against Eldritch. Probably, I don't know. It's hard to fit stuff in Salad's extra deck nowadays. Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, I saw someone like trying to argue that you can cut Heat Leo, and I thought that was that was entertaining. But um, also, like, I guess Buffalo is also like debatable when you're also maining six other star uh, six other normal summons. Um, yeah, I think that's really like because you're playing a three debug and the three format. That seems really excessive. Yeah, format the skipper is like, like fifteen normal. Format skipper is basically buffalo anyway because you make dugras because you wouldn't make Rafflesia because yeah. if they had if they had Nibiru they would Nibiru you on the second parallel exceed someone because the format skipper you can't make Rafflesia in five summons you can only make it in six. Yeah, you can also yeah. argue people are dumb and they'll just wait because it's solid and they're like there's always no Salomon great can play around Nibiru. Yeah, true. maybe. Wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> um, Kent, there was so there was the PPG, there was the LCS, and then there was the remote duels as well, um, which saw a German guy win with Eldritch, right? I think. Okay. I think. Yeah, Eldritch synchro. Um, so weirdly busy weekend for Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, congrats to Tristan for making top four of the LCS. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, 
Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Just like check all our socials in the description to keep up to date on our content. Should have another video out on Wednesday this week as well. Uh, maybe Friday if we've actually got to content. We'll find out soon. And yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.